Hello and welcome back. This is Greg French. Uh, today we're going to look at a robotics course that I've developed for high school students. This is a fairly new course that I've just finished up. Uh, this course actually gets the kids using SolidWorks to design and create from scratch a little uh, two-wheel or three-wheel robot. Uh, there's two wheels here that are driven by servos. We've got a small sensor on here, ultrasonic sensor to detect our environment. And we have a little Adreno here on the back, this little nano. Uh, that's going to take those signals that it detects and then drive the robot and uh, try to avoid any obstacles. Great little course. Uh, we get some solid works and some design. We get some building using uh, electronic components. And then finally we get to use a little computer science and program our robot to run totally autonomously. So here's the little maze that I've created uh, for the kids to have to get through after they've built their robot. Uh, we need to test it to make sure we can actually get through autonomously a small maze. I make them enter on one side, the robot has to come up here, detect uh, these tissue boxes, turn, and then navigate its way out. And then also make them come back here and uh, navigate in the other direction. Uh, then we make the, the maze maybe a little more complicated, so it becomes a little bit more of a challenge. Let me run this little demo movie to show you how these things go. Here's two of them running. You can see as they're detecting objects, they're turning and trying to navigate their way back out of here. Now with two of them in here, it get, can sometimes gets a little more of a problem as they tangle, but they should be able to uh, separate and continue moving on. So that's a little demo of the maze, a uh, simple little maze, but it does test the ability uh, for the robot to actually navigate on its own. Uh, lesson one here, now we're going to design the robot using SolidWorks. SolidWorks is the industry standard now. Uh, for for modeling and uh, manufacturing, uh, design, uh, engineering, and education. We're finding the universities all moving to it and away from AutoCAD. A uh, little easier to use than AutoCAD and very powerful. Consequently, the kids like, like using it and prefer using it. And we're going to use it to create a simple uh, chassis and some wheels uh, and build out our little robot. SolidWorks is a great program. Uh, it's about $3,000 if you want to try to purchase it as a commercial user. But for students, they can generally find it free. Most universities have multi-seat licenses. They're able to give the software away free to their students. Uh, licenses are good for maybe a year or two. Uh, there's also vouchers available if you want to get certified as a CW, CSWA or associate level uh, certified SOLIDWORKS. Uh, very valuable in the industry and for the schools because if you're going to into an engineering design program, you're very likely to see this uh, in your college. Or if you get into an internship program, you'll be using this. So getting started now with it could be very helpful. Uh, if you don't have access through your school, as a student, you can purchase it for $100. Or if you're a veteran, you can get it for only $20. But I would check your school to see if anybody is using it at the school. If anybody, any instructors or any programs are using it, then you should be able to obtain a free license. First of all, to get this started, we're going to go ahead and up the top uh, of the SolidWorks. You'll see a little, looks like a document with a little corner turned over. I want to click on that. This window opens up. We have three options here, part, assembly, and drawing. We're going to create a part first, and then from that part, if we create more than one part, we can bring them together in an assembly. And then what I also like to do is from the parts, I, I automatically create a drawing. Instead of creating the drawing first, I create the part. And then it's just a, a pretty simple process to create the drawing. But always a good idea to create a drawing so that you have uh, that as reference if you need to go back and recreate that or if you lose your part uh, file or if you even lose the part. If you keep drawings, uh, you'll have some reference to get back and uh, recreate. Uh, first thing you need to do is select a plane. Uh, you'll have three planes in which to select from, the front plane, top plane, and the right plane. Uh, what I usually do is I come up here to Features and then hit this Extrude Bus Base, uh, click on the front plane, and it will turn normal to me so that I can begin to draw on it or sketch on it. And once it turns normal to me, the first thing I want to do is create a rectangle for my chassis. Coming up here, Sketch you see is automatically selected from these three tabs. you got Features, Sketch, Evaluate. And those are our three most important. Clicking on Sketch, you can see we've got some basic shapes. So I'm going to select the rectangle, and it's going to be a center rectangle. I'm going to hover my mouse over this uh, point here. you got a couple of uh, arrows coming up, and that becomes a good reference point in which to draw from. 
So I start by hovering my mouse over here. You'll see a little orange dot appear, and then I just left click and start drawing a rectangle. As soon as the rectangle starts to draw, I just go ahead and release, and I come up here to Smart Dimensions, click on Smart Dimensions, click on the lines, and then I can put in my dimensions. So I'm putting 100 here for the top and 75 on the side here. Once we get our sketch drawn, then we can go ahead and select Features, Extrude, and we can extrude this out. Uh, this, I think, is going to be 34, even though it's 30 here in the diagram. 34 seemed to be the dimension that we need to have to make this thick enough for the, for the servos. So we just go ahead and we extrude that up, and we end up with a solid uh, block. Uh, but then for my chassis, I'm going to have to shell this out and also remove some of the sides. So I'm going to hold down my control key, and I'm going to click on this face here, on the side, uh, this back face, and then this other side face. And then I'm going to make this just three millimeters for the wall thickness. Select OK. You'll see we've shelled that, all that material away, and we just have this chassis. Uh, next, we're going to cut some rectangles in the sides here for our servos. And the dimensions for the, rect for the, for the rectangle for the servos, I'm gonna, the servos about 20 by, by 41. But I had this uh, 0.2 because as the plastic is extruded, uh, it, it, it presses out about a, a 0.1 on each side. So if I uh, put 0.2 on here, I make the holes big enough so that I don't have to do some post-production here to remove that plastic. So usually I try to cut everything big enough so that I'm not using too much time in post-production and things slip in fairly quickly. So here are the 41.2 across the top, 20.2. It's offset by 12 from this edge here. And we're 8, I think, on the top here, and probably uh, 5 on the bottom because we have a 3 uh, millimeter thickness uh, for this side. So then we go ahead and cut those holes. And then we put in some small holes here for our screws. Again, you've got the dimensions on uh, dimensions here. They're, they're 5 millimeter holes, offset by 5, uh, spaced about 10 Part, and then from the edges they're a 5.1 so we got the holes cut now now we're going to go ahead and cut some material off the top so we can run our wires uh, from the servos up to the adreno so we'll, we'll cut one hole here it's going to be 8 by 51 offset by 12 then we're going to use a linear pattern to cut the other two holes so we select the inner linear pattern we're going to have three holes and they're going to be spaced 29 millimeters we say OK and we have the three holes. Now we're going to cut some little small circular holes, six millimeters, and these are going to be uh, on the back side. We're going to use this to support the ball. It's on the back. And on the front, we might have another sensor that we might want to add to this later, and we have some more holes in order to add that sensor. So we'll cut those holes. Uh, next and final would be a, maybe a hole up here in the front uh, for maybe adding another axle if we wanted to do that later to turn this into maybe a car. So we cut those, we do a little fillets on the corners. And these are little five millimeter fillets just to kind of round off those edges. And we have our chassis. Uh, next, we're gonna create that uh, rear ball support. So again, we're gonna start off with a new part and we're gonna do a, a rectangle, 48 by 12. We're gonna just extrude this two millimeters and then we'll cut a couple of holes, 6.2 in each side, spaced by 35. And then we're going to put a couple of small rectangle sketches on here and extrude this out so that we have some supports for the ball. And then we'll cut some holes through those supports so that we can run a, a, a fastener through here, a small bolt that we'll create later. And again, we're just going to cut these edges off with a fillet just to kind of round this out. And then there's our support. Next, we'll create the ball. We'll start with a circle, 20 millimeters. We'll extrude that probably about 16 and then we're going to fill up the edges to kind of round it off so it looks more like a ball. And the fillets here are only four millimeters. And then we'll have to cut a hole through the center so that we can get our little axle through there. And now we've got the ball. Uh, next, we're going to create some fasteners. Uh, instead of buying the fasteners, we just uh, build them out of plastic uh, since we have a lot of plastic and it's cheap. So we'll start with a little polygon for the head of the screw, make it 10, 10 wide. Uh, probably uh, extrude that maybe five or six millimeters. Uh, put a little circle here in the center here and extrude that out another six millimeters so that we can create the fastener. And then we're going to extrude another little cylinder out that's going to be just five millimeters and we'll put some threads on here. What I usually do is I create a new plane and then I offset that plane one millimeter into that cylinder. 
so where my thread starts not on the outer edge so it doesn't overhang it actually starts one millimeter behind so it doesn't overhang and then I put a circle here and then from the circle we're going to attach a helix so we're going to come up and look for inserting a helix or a curve in a helix we send that down the side next I need to create a little profile that I'm going to attach to that helix so they have a little thread profile so I'll create a little one millimeter circle I'll attach that to my helix and then we'll use another feature up here which is which is going to be the sweep boss base and we'll actually sweep that circle over that over that helix and create a thread and then we'll take the end of that thread fill it off kind of smooth it down and then put a little fillet here on the top edge so that we can run this into the nut without too much interference and we have our little bolt fastener it's a small bolt it's only six millimeters uh, by 12 millimeters uh, next we're going to create the nut uh, that's going to be another polygon we'll extrude that we'll cut a hole through the middle of it uh, we'll put a helix on the inside here and uh, first I'm going to put that circle again though and I'm going to I'm going to set the plane so it's embedded one millimeter inside the face here so my helix starts uh, from that instead of starting on the outer edge where it would overhang and then I have my helix and again we're going to create the small circle and uh, attach that to the helix and sweep it so that we get our thread again and then we'll do some fillets on the edges and uh, now we've got a little nut so once the nuts uh, uh, fix next thing we need to do is create a little bit longer bolt so that we can get that through that little ball that we created for that support so again we're going to start with a polygon like we do with the original fastener but this time we're going to extrude that first extrusion 20 millimeters instead of six It'll be a little bit longer bolt and then we'll just put the threads on the out outer edge or out on the outer cylinder there like we did on that first bolt so now we have a fastener that's a little bit longer this is six instead of six by twelve it's six by twenty six and this will fit through our uh, ball support uh, next we're going to start creating some wheels we need a couple of wheels for our car so we're going to start with a 60 millimeter circle and we're going to extrude it just 10 millimeters and then on the edge of the circle we're going to create a small profile and we're going to put uh, across this or on the outer edge of our wheel uh, some some treads so that we get a little bit more traction and this is our profile for it uh, we create one we can create a bunch of them using our circular profile so we're going to have a total of 60 and they're going to go 360 degrees and uh, when I'm equally spaced so you can see that they're being drawn next is we'll go ahead and accept that and we actually have now 60 looks like a gears uh, tooth all the way around but this creates again a nice little wheel uh, with good traction for whatever you might go across either a smooth surface dirty sandy dirt surface or a carpet and we'll cut a little hole through here so that we can mount this onto our servo now I create a little larger hole here that I'm going to cut in and then I'm going to fill it that to kind of round it off so you get this little uh, filleted area all the way down to where this is only two millimeters thick so that I can get and uh, fasten this to my servo without any problem on the back side of here we're going to fasten a servo horn with a couple of screws so that this can be easily attached uh, to the servo well that's it for the robot for the chassis uh, that small ball support in the back and the wheels so we've got all of those uh, parts now created we can turn them into STL files and we can print them on our printer so we'll be doing that and then we'll go ahead and assemble our robot in the next lesson and then on our third lesson we'll start the programming so that completes the first lesson uh, thanks very much for watching uh, hoping, hoping maybe you have SolidWorks and you're able to follow along and create this robot. Thanks again.